So good evening, everybody, and thank you, Shang Zin. Um, so I have a, I'm very fortunate to have a great job. I meet a lot of extraordinary entrepreneurs who've done amazing things. Uh, but if I think about that group, uh, even in that good company, Jack Ma really stands out. Um, Jack's a pioneer in the internet industry, um, and uh, it's widely acknowledged that he started the first uh, internet company in China back in 1995, a company called China Pages. And he competed with, the, uh, with China Telecom and then eventually partnered with China Telecom. And, and apparently, very quickly after that, he felt like the ant with the elephant. He quit. He went off to uh, work with a new government entity that was in uh, promoting e-commerce and did that for a little while. And then his sort of entrepreneurial ambitions got the better of him. And in 1999, uh, he got 18 of his friends and family together and raised $60,000. Uh, for his vision for Alibaba. Uh, and he's been the leading uh, sort of inspiration between, behind Alibaba. And I, and I learned it's more than just Alibaba. There's a whole group um, ever since. Uh, talk, just talking about Alibaba itself. Alibaba is the leading small business e-commerce uh, company in the world. It has 53 million users and operates in more than 240 countries and regions around the world. Uh, in uh, 2007, it raised $1.7 billion in an initial public offering in Hong Kong, uh, which was the largest IPO uh, since Google. Uh, it has continued to grow, and just I looked at the last quarter results for second quarter of this year, uh, and uh, uh, revenues were up by about 50%, and uh, EBITDA margins are about 35%. And I thought that was pretty impressive until I was downstairs talking with, with Jack and his colleagues, and they said, oh, you don't understand. That's just sort of the tip of the iceberg. We have all these other companies. And I said, well, tell me about those. Well, uh, Alibaba is one of five. Uh, there's also Taobao. Did I get it right? Did I pronounce it correctly? OK. I've been practicing for the last five minutes, Taobao, uh, which is basically as a combination of, imagine if you had Amazon, eBay, and Facebook, right? that whole platform. And last year, there were about $30 billion. So it's a B to C uh, website. Last year, there were about $30 billion worth of transactions that went through Taobao. And expectations are uh, next year, uh, revenues will double, or transactions will double. There's also Alipay, which is the Chinese version of PayPal. It's an escrow-based uh, um, system that allowed uh, uh, allows people to purchase online without having credit cards. And there are some 400 million users of Alipay. So um, uh, Jack is truly a visionary, truly an extraordinary entrepreneur. Uh, he's been recognized by us tonight, but also Time Magazine as one of the world's most influential people, by Business Week as one of the world's most powerful people. Uh, he has a reputation for plain speaking uh, and speaking his mind, and we're delighted to have him here tonight. Jack? Thank you, Professor. It's my great honor um, to be here. So uh, when I listen to the introduction, I'm a little bit confused whether it's talking to me as the most powerful people, <laughs> influential people. And, and uh, I'm a, I'm first, let me know, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm 100% made in China. And I learned my English by myself when I was a kid. Uh, from the Ameri most of the American tourists when they visit uh, my city called Hangzhou. So 1970s, early 1970s, when a lot of uh, foreign visitors visited the city. So I, um, every morning I got up early and, and become the tour guide for them for, for nine years, a free guy, and they told me English, and I told, uh, the, uh, I showed them around. And um, <clears throat> I learned not the language, I learned the culture. And I learned how to think differently because everything I learned from my schools when I was a kid was different from the things I learned from the foreign tourists. Because uh, my father and my, my school teachers told me that uh, China was the richest country in the world and we're going to liberate the world. And just like today's North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> and um, later I found out that was not true. So uh, since then, uh, I, uh, I'm a little bit different from most of the Chinese. People say, Jack, you're different from a Chinese. But when the, but the American people look at me like a, a very typical Chinese. The Chinese look at me like American people because I understand the culture here. So I'm not, I have never even one day trained in the States. 
but I learned a lot. I got my in internet concept from the States. <clears throat> well, first let me introduce you a little bit about Alibaba Group. Um, Alibaba was founded in 1999, 18 founders in my apartment, and uh, they're, we just have an idea, we believe internet is going to change China, internet is booming. So nobody believed us. Everybody said, well, um, you know, it's like, how can you do internet in China? It's because China government, the censorship, and this and that, there's no reasons for us to survive. And uh, today people say, Jack, you're, you're a visionary. How could you tell e-commerce internet uh, 10 years ago? And uh, I said, I, I think it's like we are like a blind man riding on the back of blind tigers just by accident. You know, we focused, we make the thing happen, and today. From 18 people now, today we have more than 20,000 people. And uh, we grow from one company to five companies right now. The first company is called Alibaba.com. It is focused on small, medium-sized companies, helping small, medium-sized companies. We have over uh, 30, 37, 38 million registered SMEs in China using our services. Outside China, we have more than 12 million SMEs using our services. So well, our business model, very simple. One side is China side, is a domestic trading. Anything you want to buy, anything you want to sell in China, you can use in the China website. It's like a marketplace, like eBay. But eBay is C2C. We are B2B. Uh, it's a, the, the Alibaba B2B, one is China domestic trading, the other is import-export. It's a marketplace for global purchasing, broker buying, and so uh, it, it grows pretty healthy. We, we listed four, three years ago in the, uh, in the Hong Kong market, and the, well, we were very lucky because uh, the day we were listed, uh, we listed the, the market was good, so our stock price grew from $13.5 to $40 without doing anything good, just to go up. And <laughs> three months later, our stock from $40 to $3, and without doing anything bad, you know, just <laughs> up and down. <clears throat> and uh, that was a rock and roll, and now the, the company is stabilized. We still focus on e-commerce, still focus on SMEs, but the second company, we, the other four companies are private companies. The other company which we own 100% is called Taobao.com, which you probably have, I mean, most Chinese people here have heard about it. It is much more influential than, than Alibaba.com in China. We have more than 300 million registered users. It starts with C2C, but 95% of the uh, uh, is uh, from, uh, from B2C. And uh, um, Six years ago, we started competing with eBay. eBay uh, had a lot of money. At that time, their, their market cap was $80 billion. They came to China. They said, we are competing with Alibaba. And uh, we, we started the business from zero, and we got like 2 or 3% market share. Now we have 90% market share, which eBay had like a 2 or 3% market share. So <clears throat> Taobao is like a combination of, uh, of uh, Amazon, eBay, and Google, and Facebook. It's a, it's a community online, and uh, it, we have uh, 43 million unique visitors visit to the site shopping every day, and we finish 8 million, <clears throat> 8 million transactions per day. And, and, and uh, logistically, last year, the package delivered on the whole China is 2 billion packages delivered on the road. We created 1.1 billion. So we like 55% of market share that is on the uh, delivery. It's growing very fast, and it's, 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 uh, we, we, will, we already have like 100% growth in the past seven years, and we'll keep on having 100% this year. And um, the third company we have called Alipay, it's like a PayPal. It's a very stupid uh, model. Um, uh, five years ago, I thought uh, people it's so difficult to do transaction online because people don't trust each other. The banking system is so bad. The infrastructure of finance is also bad. So I was worried about what I'm going to do. The bank has the license to do this business, but we know how to do business, but we don't have the license. So at the, at the end, people say, Jack, don't touch that area. If you touch that area, you will be in prison because financial sector is very risky in China. And I said, put me in the prison. Let's do it. And we do transparent, we do everything clear in order to make sure government happy, people happy. So we work with the best, you know, close to 70 banks in China. Today, we have 400 million 
uh, registered users, and we are the largest um, uh, online third-party payment uh, without any business model. We just want to help people. That makes the banks very unhappy because we destroy their business model. Um, China, in the, in the world, a good bank, like 60 or 70 percent of the revenues work from the services, but China, 70 or 6, 70 or 80 percent of revenues come from the loaning. So we go inside, go into the service. The fourth company is Ali Cloud Computing, which we registered, we just uh, founded two years ago. Because we have the data from small, medium-sized companies, because we have the data from Taobao consumers, and we have the data from Alipay. So the data we collected uh, become so influential that we, we want the, all the consumers to share to, to understand the data from SME and let the consumers understand as the SME data. So that is, uh, we've been very focused on cloud computing. And the fifth, the f number five company we had is called Yahoo China, which we acquired from Yahoo five years ago. So these are the, the, the group. And uh, Alibaba is listed, the other four are private. And uh, pretty good, we are, we are uh, lucky in China that uh, we combine, you know, like Amazon, eBay, PayPal, and, and all together in a same group. Um, like 70% market share in China on e-commerce and, and, and uh, it growing, still keep on growing very fast. Uh, one of the reasons people say why you survived in China, why you succeed, because um, I think one of the key reasons we survived is that uh, um, we believe always custom number one, employee number two, shareholder number three. And this is the first day philosophy until now I st we still trust it because it's the customer that's, that stay with us. It's the customer we create. Because in internet in China in the past 10 years, there's three main business. One is focused on portal sites like Yahoo and today have Sina, Suhu, NetEase. They focus on the news. And I think it's so difficult to do the news in China unless you're in Beijing. You know, you know the government office, you know the policy, and we don't never understand what the government policy is. So uh, we say, okay, let's stay away from the uh, portal sites. The second business, which in China, very, very popular, which probably the most unique business in the world, that's online gaming. And I don't believe that model. I don't believe, I don't like that, because China is one child family. If all the kids are playing online gaming, they're so bad. And, <laughs> Right, and my, my, my kids and my son and his schoolmates all stick to the online. I think, yeah, yes, we can make a lot of money, but I just don't want my kids to focus on the online. So we're not doing that. China has already got enough companies focusing on online. Almost all the internet companies have online gamings. We are the only company that is not on online gamings. So the only thing we can do is e-commerce, and e-commerce is so tough, so difficult to do it. And uh, 10 years ago, e-commerce in the world, B2B, they all want to focus on big companies. They all want to focus on buyers. The value they create is they save the cost for buyers. So we do the opposite. And we believe China, the USA is very good at play basketball. We should focus on playing ping pong because we should not always play the same. So we said, in China, we don't have big companies, so we should focus on small, medium-sized companies. We should not help the buyers. We should help sellers because China want to sell things abroad. SMEs want to sell things abroad. So we focus on the small, medium-sized. We focus on helping supplies. And the value created is not the saving the cost because SME know how to save the cost but much better than you do. They want to learn how to sell product, how to make money. So then we focus on SME, we focus on uh, supplies, we focus on creating money for them. So these are the focus we stayed on. And uh, that, that is the everything, you know, for the first three years, we didn't have any business model. We have a zero revenues for three years. It was so tough. It was so difficult. The only thing encouraged us to continue is uh, letters, emails of thanks. We receive hundreds of thousands of emails of thanks every week, every month. People thank us because of us, they created jobs. Because of us, they, 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 <clears throat> their business grow, and 
You know, we did not get any money, but if our customer make money, we are happy. And the number four year, we start to make money. So the second thing is the employees. I believe, you know, I'm not trained to be a high tech guy. I hate high tech. And um, um, my wife bought me an iPad. I still don't know how to use it. <laughs> and I never use the PPT because I don't know how to do it. When, every time I use it, something wrong with the PPT. So <laughs> I don't know how to speak. So uh, I'm trained to be a high school teacher. And, uh, and, and, and uh, I know nothing about technology. The only thing I can use in the computer is send and receive emails in a browser. That's it. And I think that's enough, right? And 80% of the people in the world, like me, we, we, we hate technology. We want technology to work for us. We should not work for the technology. And um, <clears throat> so I was the, for the first five years, I was the quality controller of my website. I want to make sure everything will be easy, simple enough to use without reading any manual. A damn click, I can get it. So if when the engineers finish their product, they were so excited, something good, and they say, no, 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 let me try it. If I cannot use it, just free the rubbish because 80% of people cannot use it. That make our site very popular. And that is the innovation of the, of the colleagues, of the people. So. I'm not knowing the technology, we hire the best technician. We do not know the finance, we hire the best. We respect, we work, and that really make the, uh, the business grow. And the third thing is that I believe the shareholder number three. We should respect shareholders, listen to them, doing your, but you have to do it in your own way. I remember when we come to IPO day in New York and in London, and all the Wall Street said, Jack, you know, give us the shares. We were a long-term shareholder. When the, when the uh, market crashed, they are the first people who run away, and and most of them are not shareholders. We found most people, they are share stocker. You know, stock change. They move very fast. So <clears throat> we think that we should listen to them, but we should do it in our own ways. That for ten years we focus on that. Always believe custom number one, employee number two, shareholder number three, and. Uh, that is, and the third thing that people say, China doing business is very important, the Guanxi government relationship, that's too complicated. I, I don't buy that. I mean, those stupid companies focus on government relationships. And government relationship, is, is that important? Yes. I said the, be the best way to do government relation is in love with them, don't marry them. <laughs> Never ever do business with them. Right, but they respect them. Anything you know. For ten years, we've been working with the old government officers and then tell them what is Alibaba, what is e-commerce, what is internet, because it's so new to any government. If you try to convince, talk to them. Not not doing anything that is uh, uh, doing. If they want to come to say, Jack, I give you a lot of money. Please do this project for us. I say no. I can introduce my friend to do business to you, but not to me. Not not us. That we focus on customers. And um, I think in China, doing business is a lot of fun. Competition is a great fun part of the business. We compete with eBay, we compete with China Mobile, uh, China Telecom uh, 10 years ago, and uh, 15, 20 years, 15 years ago. And we compete with eBay, and later we compete with here and there. Um, Compete is not a for compete. Compete is a fun part of the business. And uh, we're never scared of every competition. If Google comes to China, we compete. But we respect. So the whole business uh, today, we think China has a huge potential on e-commerce. E-commerce in the States, I believe, it is a dessert. But China become a main cause. Uh, because of infrastructure of doing business so bad, so internet, e-commerce become the infrastructure of China doing business. Um, just like a 10, year, 10, 20, 15 years ago, China, the infrastructure of telecommunication was so bad. And then the mobile phone suddenly take off. So today, we are facing the same opportunities. So what people say, Jack, uh, uh, then what is your business model for Alibaba Group? I'm, Fortunately, we have a business model for B2B, that is membership fee. We do not charge transaction fees. Why not transaction fees? Because membership fee, every SME understand. You try to make sure your customer understand what do you do, what value you created. And uh, when you talk about transactions, the PE for Alibaba will grow, but the customer never understand. We want the customer understand. Forget about the Wall Street analyst. 
and a lot of analysts to write about us, but they never visited us. They, they you just do like a 20 minutes phone call every quarter, and they, they can write a beautiful report. I mean, that's not us. We have to understand the business model. It should be simple, easy enough that the, the customer understand. And Taobao, no. Till now, we don't have a business model. We've been free. The first three years, we said we will be free for our customers for three years because we want to test, we want to try the business model. We were just about to charge number four year, and then we say, well, we only have uh, 40 million users. Why not give another two years? So we give another two years free for five years, and we just about to charge a financial crisis came and say, okay, man, forget about another two years. <laughs> so we've been <laughs> seven years without charging transaction fee, listing fee, online shop. But we started, you know, charge a little bit advertising because we have more than one billion page views per day because we have uh, 40, more than 40 million consumers visited site. Little bit of transaction, a little bit of advertisement dollars already made Taobao very profitable. And I don't want to make a business model now because Taobao is only seven years old baby. I mean, we will wait for another four, maybe three years. And then Alipay, free. Because the money we made from Alibaba B2B already can cover Taobao, cover Alipay, and cover cloud computing. And now even we do not charge money for Taobao, the advertisement dollars from Taobao already make Ali, Taobao very profitable. So we do everything. We, we really appreciate we live in China. We live at the internet period. We have the great honor to do, internet, uh, to do this business. So we never think about making money. Do any business, we forget about thinking about making money. We think about how we can create a value for the society, for the people, for the customers. If the end, the result is that you're making money. So funny, uh, and, and that really proved well that because we don't think about making money, we made a lot of money. Because I, I believe if you think about money here, this is US dollar, this is Hong Kong dollars, and you talk is all IMB. Nobody want to make friends with these guys. We want to say, I want to help. We want to help SME. We want to help consumers. So the B2, the, today B2B, Alibaba, Taobao B2C, Taobao C2C, Alipayment, I think this is not the future of e-commerce. The future of e-commerce is C to B, consumer to business. The world is changing. It's not a B to B, it's not a B to C, it's not a C to C, it's C to B, consumer to business. Because we have a large amount of consumers, the consumers can ask, can, can, can say, I want a tailor-made. I want large scale tailor-made. And this makes the e-commerce in China fundamentally change and uh, different from the USA model. So um, <clears throat> the other thing we want to, we want to use the internet and e-commerce a way to make China business, new business paradigm, which we call transparent, share, responsibility, and a global vision. And uh, <clears throat> we try to make sure every policy we make, everything we do, transparent. We want to share with customers, we want to take responsibility. And, uh, I feel very excited because the average age of Taobao today is 25 years old, Alibaba is 27 years old, and all young people, we are, we are a company that we believe value, we are a company that believe the mission, and we, we learn from the GE that every quarter we have a value review, we have the performance review, and uh, that makes the company really excited. Today, if you have a chance to visit Alibaba, you will see we have uh, we're like a zoo, all kinds of animals there. I hate to have a farm, all well-trained, but you know, they're a farm, and we want to have a zoo that people have a different ideas. People, some people talk, some people work, and some people exciting. And so, so this is, uh, uh, this is uh, how, we, how we do it. And uh, the headache we are having right now is Alibaba is getting, is getting bigger and bigger. We're so influential now in China. And uh, first time in our history, 20 days ago, we had a 200 people demonstrate in our company. <laughs> and they hate the policy we made. Because I said, if, if we made any policy, 1% of people don't like us, we have 3 million people don't like it. 
And we are make, we, today, Alibaba Group, we are not lack of engineers. We are not lack of uh, programmers and service people. We are lack of sociologists. We are lack of uh, psychologists and economists because we never know how to make a policy. We're just like a running a country. It's, it's a big headache. And the average age is only 25 to the 6. How can they make policies? And, but we think internet is really, really changed the world. And people probably were asking, the US and Google is so powerful. And we believe, this is what I believe, um, the world, we should never be controlled by machines. We should never be controlled by computers. Human brain, SNS, social network, is more powerful. At the end of the day, we do not want to see cold-blooded machines. We want to see warm people. We want to see every computer at the behind, there's an SME. There's a family. There's a consumer. There's a brother and sister that can help each other. So we actually, Alibaba, focus more on community, more innovation, and more on human side. So, um, well, I, uh, I think that today, what I come here, I just brief because I don't, I don't think a lot of people know our business model. I don't think a lot of people really um, uh, know, understand us better. So I, I would love to take any questions you have. Any, I am welcome the tough questions. Anything you have, I will answer. That's, that's what I will just briefly do this. Thank you, Professor. Yeah. So we're going to make this very interactive, but I'm going to take a moderator's prerogative and ask the first question. Uh, and, uh, China's economic growth over the last 20 years has made it the envy of the world. Uh, in your opinion, to what extent has that been driven by the small and medium-sized enterprises that you serve? And to what extent has that growth been driven by large, formerly state-owned businesses or multinational companies? Um, I think the credit that should should be taken by SMEs and private sectors, but unfortunately the credit is taken by SOEs. Because I think the uh, uh, 15, 15 years, 10, 15 years ago, China was really good at the private sectors, which that is why we call reforming, economic reform, grow. Entrepreneurs and private sectors grow. But past the five years, the SOE state-owned business grow so fast, and the private sectors going down. And uh, I, I think next to five years, it's the time again for private sectors. Mm. And from private sectors, SMEs, that's the key driver. And if China want to grow, if, the, if, if China want to grow, if China want to solve a lot of social responsibility, uh, social problems, the SMEs are the key because they create 90% of jobs and 90% of innovations. And, and do you have any way of thinking about the impact of Alibaba uh, in terms of supporting the small and medium-sized uh, sector, enterprise sector? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, as I said, we have more than seven t uh, 37 million SMEs using our services. Today, um, I think it's, if you are SME, you must be using, if you are online, you must be our customers. I, I would not take credit that so Alibaba really contribute a lot of China economy, but if Alibaba bankrupt, there will be probably one million SME bankrupt. Hmm. So that is the inference. Well, then you can take credit for it, I would say. <laughs> okay, so we're going to open it up for questions. Uh, uh, there's a mic in the back, and I think there's another one up front here. So who has a question for Jack, sir? Jack, what do you think the opportunities are for Alibaba outside of China? Yeah, I think that uh, we are already Indian, we are in Japan, and we are uh, Korea, and we are also in the States. But uh, the opportunity for Ch Alibaba going out anywhere, if you want to promote SMEs, if they're SMEs, we're there. I think today we survive not because we're smart, not because we are good at technology. We understand SME. We believe SMEs. And if you believe your customers and help them grow, and they will grow. So we think we'll uh, expect also the, the Taobao, Alipay, 
cloud computings. And I think the next five years, we don't want to go global for global. We think that uh, only when we create values, if we create values for SME, if we create more SMEs in the local country, then we will be there. So that's, that's we, we are pretty confident that uh, um, um, e-commerce in China, next three years will grow from consumer-related e-commerce to be business-related uh, e-commerce. That is next to three, five years the trend. But it's happening organically for you too, isn't it? Because you're, you're, you are finding people all over the world that are using the Alibaba platform. Yeah. You know, one of the reasons why we choose the name Alibaba, we can choose another Chinese name, but we choose Alibaba because we believe that uh, Global Vision Local Win. And we believe that um, internet at the first day it should be globalized. But uh, Alibaba is not, we say Alibaba is not a Chinese company. It's happened to be found in China. And we are, we are growing pretty aggressively. And I never took, been to you know, a lot of countries, but we have so many customers around. I went to uh, Peru last month. And um, I was so excited about so many Palu business, Palu SMEs using our size. And you know, some customers, you know, look at me like um, you know, burst into tears. So thank us. <laughs> so I said, I'm sorry, I did nothing. We're just a platform, right? Yeah. So we are going there. Yeah. But I thought Alibaba was a thousand thieves. Is that the the image you wanted to? to <laughs> no, uh, Alibaba forty thieves. <laughs> well, actually. Uh, that's the story, Alibaba 40 Thieves. People always believe Alibaba is a thief. No, Alibaba and 40 Thieves. 40 Thieves is a bad guy. Alibaba is a good guy. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we got that straight away. Um, sir. Thank you so much for coming in to speak to the Columbia community, Jack. Uh, I just have a question for you regarding Google. What advice would you have for them to succeed in China? Who? Google. Google. Okay. <laughs> Um, I think uh, respect the market, respect the government, respect the culture. Um, you don't, you know, as I, as an American, that um, they're saying, I like, I don't like what you say, but I keep, I, res I, I use my life to protect the way you say, it, you know, the, the right you say that. Come to China, I think uh, we have to be, I, as a business, it's not Google is tough. It's tough for every business. Alibaba is also tough to do in China. But we respect people. We respect customer. We respect government. We respect culture. And most of the multinational companies, when they come to China, they should find entrepreneurs. I am, unfortunately, I find a lot of multinational internet companies that come to China, they find professional managers. Those professional men, they make boss happy rather than customer happy. They should know why Google succeed in USA because Google have great entrepreneurs that make the Google users happy. If they come to China, they should make the user happy. And people always complain, the states complain about China, government censorship and censorship of that and this and that. I tell you what, 95% they're always good part, the 90% are good, 5% are bad. Why you always want to criticize the 5%? If you get 90% good, helping more people, and that's tiny little do, do it. You can improve it. Business is a headache for everybody. And the thing is to change yourself. If you cannot change the world, change yourself to meet the world. You are doing business. And I never know if I had idea today to do business in China. I think the idea, the power, the influence, the contribution we do today is much more powerful than 10 years ago. And we do little by little, by respecting people, respecting the culture, respect customers, and respect the government. It's not easy to run a country like government, I'm, I tell you the truth. I never think about running my own company, it's big headache. Only 20,000 people running a country for 1.3 billion people, it's big headache. So I don't have, a, I don't have a advice to um, mountain because most of the multinational internet company come to China all have the problems. Some of the suggestions I give, don't talk to the central government, talk to the local government. Don't go to Beijing, go to the local municipal government because this government make decision quick. 
right? Why not always, oh, I know this minister, I know that guy's. No use. Talking to the customer, talking to the local municipal government, talk to the provincial government, these guys, let's do it. In Beijing, you're waiting for policy, it takes about three years. Yeah. This gentleman here. Thank you so much. And I'm just curious, Hangzhou is such a great example of an environmentally fantastic city in Westlake. What, I, and I think on Alibaba there's maybe electric vehicles for sale, but what are you doing both culturally inside the company to contribute to a greener, more environmentally responsible company, country, and what do you see for the clean tech revolution and what Alibaba can play as a part in that? Thank you very much. I'm a, I'm a strong believer for the green things and environment. Um, I'm the uh, board director for TNC, uh, uh, and I'm a act, we are active on that. And I think that um, uh, which struck me most was four years ago, the IPO day. I was at a press conference. There's two tough guys came in and said, Jack, I have a question for you because you sold shock things on Alibaba.com. I said, shock things? So what? How come people only eat the shock things? And then they criticized me. Uh, they, it, it seems like they want to kill me. I said, Let's, when I listened, I said, okay. I cannot change the habit of Chinese people. Stop eating shock things. But I will stop eating shock things. And then I said, no, I don't eat shock things since then. Then I start to realize what happened with the shark fins. The more I started inside, we said, oh my God, we killed so many sharks, which really make the ocean life bad. And then three years ago, I lost two employees. They're only 20s, all of can because of cancer. And I told the whole, we discussed with among employees. The environment is in such a bad situation. Every family, every people, I ask, do you have a relative that have cancer? All of them say, yes, I do. So what's wrong with the economy? What's wrong with our environment? And then three years ago when I went to the, went to a river, there was a lake. When I was a kid, 13 years old, I, I, because I jumped into the lake and I almost died because the water is so deep and I did, could not swim. Today I went to the same lake, the water was here. And I was shocked, we were all shocked. So I showed the pictures, talked to the employee, and we become a company that believe in that. Because we are, we are the people, most of the people in our company born in 1980s and 90s. So we contribute 0.3% of the revenues of Alibaba Group on water protection and tree plantation. And we believe green tech is the future. If China does not pay attention to the environment, we are killing our kids and we're killing ourselves. When I saw my father-in-law die of cancer three years ago, we're all shocked. And when I see every year we lost two lives among the young people of our own company, and the people realized oh, that is the, tra the, the tragedy we are facing now. The economies grow, people are dying. Why don't want people making money and die? Because of the environment. And when we were shocked, so uh, when we see that the Yangtze River, the, the fish was poisonous. That's the disaster. So Alibaba is doing a lot on Taobao, Alipay with committed revenues, and also we're learning the way the TNC. And the other thing is that every quarter for the senior manager for Alibaba, CEO of Taobao, CEO of Alibaba, CEO of Alipay, it's very difficult for us to get together once every month. So we committed once every quarter, one day. We discuss, but nothing, just water protection and tree plantation. And every employees, we have a car park in the company. Only you plant that much trees, it will give you a light, we will give you a green card, you can park the car, otherwise you're not allowed. And that make everybody start to learn, start to commit. So I think it's just the beginning. And we cannot do, always cannot do enough, but we will wake up one billion people wake up the young people that how serious we are in the situation. So the green tag, I think in China, has a huge potential. And we'll, we'll foster that to make things happen. Yeah. Okay, we'll do over the side. This lady here. 
As a follow-up to your earlier, your earlier answer on global plans for Alibaba, what is your approach with um, diversifying your human capital, be it in countries outside of China or even within China with people from other countries? The human capital? The employee base, your teams. Um, I probably spend 70% of my time on the, on the HR part. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a great fan, and I believe it's leadership is about the people. And my people, my team, my partners, they are much smarter than me on making business decisions. But my job is to find the talents and build and develop them. So we have all kinds of uh, uh, system. For example, we have, uh, which are the foreigners do not understand, I mean, they call it party school, Dang Xiao. I learn a lot from the government. I learned a lot from the government because five years, ten years ago, you know, nine years ago when I want to change a manager, oh my God, the whole team got crazy and almost the company got like bankrupt. But when I see Chinese government, if you want to change a governor, just one minute, change government. You need to change them. So I said, what happened? Right? With a paper, three minutes, change this governor to that one. Everybody said, yes. But you know, a company, small, tiny manager, it's a big earthquake. Then you learn why, how government organize. And I spent a lot of time on how, how Chinese Communism Party run. So we learn the improving, learn improving, until today, everyone has three successors. We hire people who have dreams. We, we don't care what kind of dreams you have. As long as they're dreams, and we don't care, you change your dreams. But you must have dreams. Dream, I want to buy a new car, I want to, have a, I want to marry, I want to have a kid, I want to, you know, whatever dreams you have, that's fine. But then we build up the team dream, the I, ideal. That is, when you become a manager, your job is, his job is to support the other people to be successful. And direct level, a VP level, you think about the society. You think about how I can improve the society, help more people. So I think our culture is mainly value-based and mission-based. When we make decisions, we ask ourselves, is it according to our mission for B2B, helping doing business easier? If it is yes, let's go ahead. If it's not, let's just shut it down. So that's how, how have you developed your management philosophy? Did you start off with this philosophy, or did you start like most entrepreneurs do? They like, have a real technical focus. They're focused on the product. And then when they start having all sorts of angst with employees, then they sort of learn how to be a people manager. Or, or were you the same from the beginning? No, same. The first day, um, we're focusing on not product, not technology. It's all about customers. And, and I, it probably, because I was trained to be a teacher, mm -hmm. and I still have a bad habit of a teacher. I was saying, no, 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 making sure, talking to them 24 hours a day, and they, they speak, they do like me. <laughs> You're going to stay here until you get it right. <laughs> yeah, that's do right. Yeah. But, you know, it's, uh, that is the way that uh, making sure your team and you and the same people, same group of people, and then influence more and more people. Focus on customer if it's law, you know, change yourself. If there are nine rabbits on the, on, the, on the ground, if you want to catch the rabbit, don't change the rabbit, change yourself. Just to focus on one rabbit. And focus, but I'll focus on the customers. So uh, you were trained as a teacher. Yeah. Uh, did you ever have any business training? No. No. I was rejected by uh, all your beautiful business schools for 10. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Jane, I, do you think I, get an honorary I, I degree for this man? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you've not, you've not uh, felt a need for that. You've learned on the job. I learned on the jobs. And, um, and I, um, we are building up a China entrepreneur school now. Mm -hmm. uh, when I retire in a few years, I'm retired. That's just don't give up the <clears throat> current jobs. I'm going to focus in fully 100% on helping the entrepreneurs mm. in China. Mm. So I'm going to ask you a question that I get asked all the time is, can you, uh, can you make entrepreneurs? I don't know whether you can make, but you can find entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Find these guys, train them, give them opportunity, and encourage them. Mm -hmm. If you are a good business leader, 
your first job is find those people who have talents, become the entrepreneur, and help them, and train them, and develop them. That's like、uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you walk on the street for three days. If you still cannot find a business opportunity, just to forget about it. If you come to Taobao or Alibaba for 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 five hours, you don't know what is the business opportunity. Just to forget about entrepreneur, right? If you sitting with a team, talking to them, I think you know, one month or two months, you can, you will find this guy could be that guy could be that guy, and then train them.、Yeah. I don't know how you whether you can. But you want them all to be entrepreneurs, or don't you want some workers? No, 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 no. It's impossible to make it all of them. Some people, but you can find who are the leader among the seven people. I would say, if you put, it's a social study, which I, I strongly believe that, if you catch six people and put them in the room, watch them for two hours, one of them would be a leader. If you catch seven people in the room and put them in two hours, and you will find one of them is a is a terrible guy, is asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, which I think sometimes it's me, it's you yourself. That's the that all happens. And then what we our job is to find out the talents, find out the leadership, and find out the bad guy and take that out and move into training.、Yeah. And I think, unfortunately, most of the professors cannot tell. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I got a lot of those. I, I got a lot of those asshole guys in my <laughs> class. <laughs> You know what I do is that those people who succeed never know why they succeed. Those people know how to succeed; they will never succeed. <laughs> I find a lot of things funny. A professor came to the company and telling, "Ah,、oh, you know that's that that." You know, yes, you're right. But if they want to open another shop, they bankrupt. <laughs> we guys move ahead, and we we made a lot of things, but we don't know how to tell why we succeed. We don't know. I find a lot of people that not not necessarily all the professors don't not tell right most of the professors. <laughs> most of the professors. <laughs> giving us a little wiggle room. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it.、Uh, this、yeah. lady over here. My colleague has a question. Oh, Helen, hi.、Um, you mentioned that、um, the, the the growth of small business is not sustainable. Can you help us understand the profile of them? I'm 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 going to assume that the majority. That the majority of them are family-owned.、Yep. That the majority of them um, are are um, located along the eastern seaboard.、Um, would you be able to help us with 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 a couple of、um, again, you know, large characteristics? Okay, for SMEs, most of the family-owned. That's right. And most of the people, the schoolmates and classmates, and and like a, a five, ten people, and no more than thirty people. I like the team. the The best SME usually around twenty people. And when you talk about 100, 200, that is me. So what what I think that ch- most of the Alibaba customers are like people like 30, 30 people. You know, these are the people they have、uh, a manager does everything, and they need to train the fir- the first for SME. The first stage is to survive. The only strategy is to survive. S- the only st- surviving strategy is sell things out. And the second stage, which we call develop, is that manage and leadership, manage manage people, right? And the third stage is finance. There are three stages. So we focus on the surviving stages, which help SME to sell people, to sell things. If you have a 30 people business, usually SME does not have technology. Do not think about SME is like a Silicon Valley technology company. Most of SMEs, 30 people, they probably have 20 people. They are salespeople. If you go to Shenzhen, Guangdong, there's a van, there's you know small van of 20 people of them. You ask them out, how many people are sales? 19 of them are sales. And one is a driver. They are everywhere.、And、that driver is also sales, right? So these are the which I mean, tiny SMEs. And focusing on them, and these because there was tiny dream. Most of the greatest companies, Google, eBay, Microsoft, they all come after a garage. And these are the innovation of any country. That's the engine of the future. And I, I, I strongly believe that 
we give them more opportunity. We should support them. And we should give them, the, it's not technology. It's not the tax. It gives them talents, training. Give them understanding. Buy things from them. Support them. That will, that will really great. That will grow. So 30 people around. I love these kind of companies, you know, when, you, when I have uh, 20 people, I can call everybody's name. Today, I have a headache, 20,000 people. Mm. Yeah. So we are almost out of time, so we're going to take two more questions way in the back. Yes. Uh. Uh, so you, in your response to the, uh, to the question about what kind of advice you will give to Google, you keep on mentioning respect the government and respect the people. So I'm just wondering, uh, do you think it's possible at all for these two kind of goals to be in conflict with each other? And if so, how does Alibaba do to balance the two goals? The coverage uh, between government and uh, uh, customers? And the customer, yeah. No. <laughs> I tell you what, not, not because, I'm not sort of, uh, uh, I think government officials today in China, you should understand that most of them are young government officers. They are open-minded. If anything, we contract between the employees or because of customers and government. Better talk to the government officers. Why this? Why that? Because it's very difficult to change customers. You can change the government. Talking to them. So if they say, no, let's say that again. No, and then, okay, I change it myself. <laughs> because I know it's not easy. People like here talking about democracy and freedom. Your father, your grandfather all understand what freedom democracy is. You know how to protect it, how to enjoy it. But China, we lack of this period. And it's not easy. I've been working in the government for 83, 13 months as a part-time job. I say, oh my God, I would never choose that tough job. It's easy to say, but we need encourage. Tell them. It's good. Now, if you try this one, would be better. This one would be better. Government sometimes like a children. You need encouragement. <laughs> Everybody needs encouragement. You know, we as entrepreneurs, we too. Nobody comfort us. Our left hand comfort the right hand. We comfort ourselves. There's so many painful things. And doing business is not like, oh, I'm everything. Listen to everybody and make the right decision. That's what I say. There's no conference. There are conferences everywhere. There'll be no conference. If you really know how to do it, do the right thing. OK, we'll have one final question. And I haven't taken a question from the back right here. And no one is raising their hand. So this lady right there. Um, back about several months ago, George Soros visited China and he spent about a day with you. I'm just wondering whether or not you can share with us what you, you learned from George Soros. What I learned from? George, so George Soros. Oh, I learned a lot from him. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we, are, uh, we enjoy a lot of vision together, but he's, uh, he's a capital guy and I'm an operation guy. And, um, what I learned from him? I forgot. <laughs> you know, there's nothing particular they can learn from somebody, but there are a lot of things you can learn, you know, the, the way he thinks. Um, I know him about seven years ago, seven or eight years ago in Davos meeting. I learned a lot from those conferences, Davos meeting. Not for, you know, people in China always say, what are you gonna learn from this conference? It's just like you eat a pig's leg and say, what are you going to get in your muscle? No. I just learn. I feel comfortable. I learn the way he thinks about the business, the way he thinks about he's, he's He told me that how he think about the government, how he think about the global economy, how he think about I never thought about that. I learned how to, how to work with my team, how to focus on customers. So this is a really uh, helpful. Yeah, but uh, I bet he learned a lot from us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jack, I'm going to turn it over to Professor Wei to wrap up. 
Jack. This has been tremendously insightful and interesting uh, speech. So thank, thank you very, very much. I have a gift from a company called Simon Pierce, which used to be a SME. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>